Hi, and welcome to Coding TensorFlow, a show where we focus on coding machine learning and AI applications. I'm Lawrence Moroni, a developer advocate for TensorFlow, and in this episode, we're going to look at using JavaScript for machine learning in the browser. In the previous episode, we looked at creating a very basic machine learning scenario in the browser. You took data that had a linear relationship and built a basic model that could predict future values based on that relationship. It might have looked a little strange in how you fed the data into the model when you were training it, with one tensor of the x values and another for the y values. And that's because one of the core concepts that you need to learn as a TensorFlow developer is all about that, how to shape your data and how to get it ready for training. This process is a major part of data science, and today we'll look at a more complex program and how you can get your data ready for training a machine learn model with it. So instead of a simple linear arrangement, which you don't really need machine learning for, let's consider a classification problem. And this is when there are multiple items of data about a thing, and then there's something about how they're related that determines the classification of that thing. So for example, an email might be a spam if it's from a particular sender or it contains particular keywords or pictures. An animal might be a doggy if it has four paws and a cute wet nose. Now, it's very difficult to program traditional if-then type code for these scenarios. And this is why machine learning can be such a powerful tool. So let's take a look at some public data, and we'll use that to build a classification system. We're going to use the well-known IRIS data set, which collects data points from 150 different samples of flower taking petal length and width, as well as sepal length and width. These measurements are then associated with one of three types of iris. By training a neural network with these measurements, telling it the values, and then the classes of flower that correspond to those values, you could then build a neural network that can infer from a new measurement what type of flower they represent. So let's take a look at the data, and here it is. And you might typically get data like this as a bunch of comma-separated values. As you can see, each entry has five values, the four measurements that I mentioned earlier, and then a value 0, 1, or 2 in the final column indicating the category of flower that the data represents. Consider the first four values to be your x's, and the last one is your y. Thus, given a set of four x's, you'd want to predict or classify the y. So now that you have the data, you can use it to train a model. To do that, you'll use tensors for the training x's and tensors for the training y's. In addition to that, you can use some of your data to test your model. So what you should do is you take a percentage of your data for training the model, and then with the remainder, compare the predicted value with their actual value, and from there you can determine how well your model is behaving. So let's take a look at the code that we use to prepare this data for training. First of all, we'll split the data into different arrays for each of the classes. This for loop iterates through the iris classes.length, and it creates two arrays, one for the data of that class and one for the values for that class. If you then look at the data, you will see that there are three classes, so we'll have three of each array. The data by class will contain the four measurements, and the targets by class will contain 0, 1, or 2 based on the flower type. Once we've created these arrays, we can now iterate through the data and sort the values into the array based on the target. So the data for class 0 will get loaded into data by class 0, and the targets for class 0 likewise, etc., etc. If I now log these arrays to the console, I can view them in my developer tools. The next step will be to convert these values into tensors with four sets of tensors, an x for training, an x for test, a y for training, and a y for test. We do this according to the test split, which is a parameter that we pass into the function. In this demo, I set it to 0.2 so that 80% of my data is used for training and 20% for testing. The workhorse here is the convert to tensors function. This takes the data, 
the targets and the split and loads all this value into tensors, splitting them into training and test sets respectively. Let's take a look at that next. Here is the convert to tensors function. It calculates the number of test examples by rounding the sample size by the split, and the number of training examples will just be the remainder. It then creates a two-dimensional tensor of the data, as you can see here, and a one-hot encoding of the label data. Now, one-hot encoding is a way of helping a machine understand how your data is being classified. So instead of the flowers being 0, 1, or 2, what happens is you get an encoded array where instead of a flower for 0, you would get 1, 0, 0. In that array, instead of 1, you get a 0, 1, 0, et cetera, et cetera. The idea is this, that, that this array will just map to your output neurons. Once you've done that, the data will be sliced into the four arrays based on the size determined by the test split. The last step is just having a nice, clean, linear set of tensors to feed into the training instead of the 2D one that you have right now. This is achieved using tf.concat along axis 0. Let's take a look at the code for this. And here's the code. You can see I set the concat axis to be 0, and then I'll return my set of four tensors where I'm concatenating them into a one-dimensional tensor. As an example, if I log the X trains against the concatenated X trains, you'll see the difference. This has the effect of reducing the overall complexity of the data being fed into the model. It doesn't have to try and figure out multiple dimensions, and this makes training quicker and more accurate. Congratulations, you've now taken raw data and you've learned how to pre-process it into tensors that make for efficient training including how to one-hot encode the output data. This is a massive part of designing any machine learning system, getting your data right. In the next video, we'll train a neural network with this data, and we'll see how you can design that network, and then how you can do classification given the trained model. You can find that right here on the TensorFlow YouTube channel, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button right now.